All right, welcome to the conversation on the TYT Network. Uh, now we're going to talk to someone that you guys might be familiar with. Uh, it's Josh Fox, uh, of course, the director of the uh, Oscar-nominated Gasland. I uh, also did Gasland 2, also did um, How to Let Go of the World and Love All the Things Climate Can't Change, also the host of Staying Home with Josh Fox, which some of you just saw live. Uh, and... Uh, there he's got great guests like he just did today, Bill McKibben, Michael Mann, etc. cetera. Um, also a man having a little bit of a beef with Michael Moore. That's a fun story, although not really that fun, uh, that we'll get into in a second. Uh, but Josh, thanks for joining us. And uh, for folks who didn't see it, tell us what staying at home uh, with Josh Fox is. Hey, Jank, thanks so much. It's great to be here. Um, it's great to be on The Young Turks. Staying Home with Josh Fox, it's our new program. Um, it's, a, it's a basically, it's called Staying Home with Josh Fox, Your Revolutionary Guide to the Green New Deal. And it started as a series of talks about the Green New Deal that I was doing for DSA in New Orleans with New Orleans for Bernie. And, um, as, and then I proposed doing this spanning tour of Pennsylvania and New York talking about climate change, talking about the Green New Deal. And, you know, obviously, couldn't do that. So I started to do the program at home. This is my theater, which is a converted garage um, in Northeast Pennsylvania, where we're sheltering in place. And Staying Home with Josh Fox essentially started as a series of conversations with climate experts um, and figures from the world of culture. So I know a lot of people who are activists, political folks, climate scientists, anti-fracking campaigners, journalists. And I know a hell of a lot of musicians and artists and writers and filmmakers. So I made a program where the first half is really about a pol political conversation. And the second half is about um, a, a more artistic dialogue, a more spiritual dialogue, a dialogue about how we're coping on the internal front with all of this huge changes. But the basic premise of the show is like, we must have the Green New Deal as a way to, um, as, a, as, a, as a cure um, and as a, a prescription out of this moment of the coronavirus, because the fossil fuel industry is actually a cofactor in the death rate of the coronavirus. So we talk a lot about how the Green New Deal is such an important part of our response to the coronavirus. And the Green New Deal is this, um, it's a piece of legislation, it's a, res it's a resolution, but it's also this fascinating world changing philosophy. So the subject, it can get really deep and it, it's not limiting at all to talk about different aspects of it on, a diff on, every, on different nights, you know what I mean? So uh, th there's so much uh, to, to go over there. Uh, when you say it's a cofactor for coronavirus, what do you mean by that? Well, okay, so the fossil fuel industry all on its own before the coronavirus is a global pandemic. The fossil fuel industry's pollution kills five to seven million people every year, just in air pollution. That gives you cancer, it gives you lung disease, it gives you heart problems and a whole host of other things, right? That costs us $30 trillion a year in healthcare costs. So to switch from you know, fossil fuels to renewable energy would save us $30 trillion a year, which would pay for the transition in about a year and a half. But those things, if you don't die from them, large, um, lung disease, heart disease, cancer, if you have a chronic condition, that makes you much more susceptible to having a bad, bad experience or even death with coronavirus because, because those things increase your chances of not surviving the coronavirus. So when we say people died of coronavirus, we also have to look into account the pollution that's there. Um, all of those things are part of the death rate. Additionally, if you live in a polluted area, you actually have a greater chance of getting the coronavirus because your lungs and your immune system are weakened. So at every stage along the game, the fossil fuel industry is a factor here. The good news yeah. is that the Green New Deal is actually the cure for the fossil fuel pandemic. We don't have a cure for coronavirus yet, but we have a cure for the other part. Yeah, friends of mine are sending me pictures uh, from all over the country and the cities that they live in, uh, remarking at how uh, clean the air is, and they can't believe how clean it is. Yeah. That that's how it would normally be if we didn't have so much pollution from the cars, because obviously people aren't driving anywhere near as much as they used to pre-coronavirus. So uh, it, you could almost, basically I'm telling you, you could see it with your own eyes, let yeah, alone things okay. that you can't see. Uh, but Josh, uh, this is the hardest question of all. H how do you uh, maintain hope that we can get the Green New Deal passed? I mean, I, I um, 
did a segment uh, recently about a five-year plan for progressives to to take over, and I believe that with uh, all my heart, and, and I think there's good evidence for that. But in the meanwhile, I mean, right now the Trump administration is considering subsidies for oil companies because poor oil companies aren't doing well enough in this, and it doesn't look like we have any prayer of being able to pass this legislation in this, uh, you know, not only with the Republican Party as it is, but with the Democratic Party as it is. Well, you know, in 2016, I served on the platform committee with Bill McKibben. We talked a little bit about this in the episode today. Um, and we were able to gather and gain enormous concessions from that Clinton uh, campaign, right? We got passed in the platform, um, you know, basically a ban on frack gas power plants and fossil, fossil fuel infrastructure. We got a um, hundred day set summit on climate action to be conducted within a hundred days of the Clinton administration. Now, none of those things came to pass because Hillary Clinton lost. First thing we have to do is we do have to elect somebody other than Donald Trump, right? So we have to vote for the candidate that we want to protest the most, because what's going to happen is We'll go out there, and if it's Joe Biden who is the nominee, the next day after Joe Biden takes office, we as the movement take the power that we've earned, right? Because we have spent all of this time over the last 10 years gaining and amassing a huge amount of power. And I, for one, will not give that power away. I'm talking about the climate movement, right? Trillions of dollars divested. Fridays for Future, these kids all over the place going bonkers. Uh, Extinction Rebellion, mass direct action. We have... Um, renewable energy plans, 100% renewable energy plans, bans on fracking, um, huge amounts of progress in the environmental movement that we're not going to give up, right? So the problem with Trump is you can't push him and you can't forward that dialogue in any way because it's never a dialogue. It's just monologue. And I yeah. think that the difference there is obviously that we want to have a, a, an administration that we believe that we can push, that will be susceptible to our pressure, and that the power that we have, we don't just lose it. Um, so, I, you know, yeah. look, I think we can pass parts of it, and I think we have champions like Bernie Sanders, like AOC, like Rashida Tlaib and others, then, uh, Ilan Omar. Um, and I think that we have to do everything we possibly can to get more of those voices into the House and into the Senate. Um, but listen, this is always about movement, right? We are the movement. We don't lose. We just, this election is about strategy, but we're the movement. We've had enormous gains. And so I, I, I have faith that if we continue to do what we've been doing, we'll have some degree of success. But we talk about this on the program every single night. Every yep. single night, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, no, no. And, and that is hopeful. That's a great answer. Uh, so a couple of uh, quick questions here, then. Um, speaking of one of those champions, we saw him in the picture that uh, we put up about the Green New Deal just a second ago. Uh, that's Ed Markey. He is the sponsor of Green New Deal in the Senate. Uh, and now uh, the corporate Democrats have decided uh, that they're going to primary him with Joseph Kennedy. Uh, so... Um, what what can folks do to make sure Ed Markey wins? And, and am I missing tons of these races? Being really important in the Senate, we practically have a third party in America right now, and that is the candidates that have been endorsed by our revolution. Um, you know, people like Doyle Canning in Oregon, people um, like uh, Andrew Romanoff running against Hickenlooper in a primary in Colorado, people um, like, like you said, Ed Markey, who is the incumbent, but is in, facing an insurgent challenge from the establishment. So we have that we, we absolutely have to go all the way out, right? Because these are now national races, okay? They're not just local. They're not just about, you know, Massachusetts or Colorado or Oregon. These are places that we have to start to focus. And one of the great guides to that has been the, the Our Revolution organization, which has endorsed progressive candidates with that progressive seal of approval. And I think that that's one of the things that we, we can look to as how do we move forward. But I think, look, the, the the revolution, the political revolution is not out of this election, right? We may not have Bernie at the top of the ticket, but we have so many other people who are being, uh, who are carrying those values forward, right? Yeah. So I mentioned uh, the Michael Moore movie, so I wanted to just touch on it for a minute. <laughs> it, Planet of the Humans came out, it was deeply controversial, went after a lot of the uh, leaders of the movement. Um, so, and I know you've talked about it before and yeah. staying with Josh Fox, and you'll probably talk about it again. But real quick, what do you think was the core of the, the problem there? What did they do wrong? <laughs> well, the premise of the film is wrong. The premise of the film is renewable energy doesn't work. 
and, or is dependent on fossil fuels. This is patently absurd. Um, obviously, if you take into account the life cycle of a wind plant or a solar plant, there's a tiny fraction of the carbon emissions that are coming from those types of forms of energy. In fact, renewable energy just beat coal in terms of power generation in the United States in the last month. So renewable energy works. It's here to stay. It is a cornerstone of the Green New Deal. Michael Moore and his friend Jeff Gibbs have been their heads buried in the sand, apparently, for at least 12 or 15 years. And they've come out with a movie with dated information, with all sorts of deceitful things, fossil fuel industry talking points. It is mind numbing. It is shocking. It is confusing. And it has been roundly attacked and rebutted and debunked and all the things. There's over, I think, a hundred different scientific rebuttals to this movie saying this is nonsense. Um, so I wrote one in The Nation, and we talk about it a bit on the program, but Michael Moore has should be embarrassed. He should. We've asked for a retraction, not censorship, not censoring the movie. We've asked that the filmmakers themselves understand that they really messed up and they pulled the movie back. They're not doing that, they're digging in their heels. It's kind of a disaster, but for them more than us, we know the truth. The truth is the climate movement is strong. The truth is the anti-fracking movement is strong. And the truth is that we have that power, uh, renewable energy power and political power. All right, everybody, uh, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, every day now uh, on tyt.com slash live, also on youtube.com slash tyt. They're both the same stream. Uh, staying home with Josh Fox. It's now the beginning of our programming uh, every day. So, Josh, great to have you on. Uh, always appreciate it, brother. So excited. Thanks for having the show and thanks for having me on today. Absolutely. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com slash join.